We're recording. Thank you. So, we're going to try a different sculpture project that I think should go really well because you guys have done the chia heads last year, so we've talked about faces a little bit. We're going to shrink the faces down and put them on a whole figure. So, your sculpture project for this semester is going to be a clay figure, and I'm going to go through a few different ways to build them. And if there's one of these that feels more intuitive to than the other, what I want you to think about is proportion and angle and how things fit together more so than building technique because you guys have worked on different building techniques and you know kind of which ones you prefer and you gravitate for. So, what's step one in our thinking process? Who knows? What? Very good. Define the problem or identify the problem if you want to use the I for the IP, help you remember. So step one, we're identifying the problem. If you haven't yet, put your name and period 10 on the paper. That would be helpful. All right, so what is it you have to do? Well, you're going to make a figure, and it's a sculpture, so it has to be balanced. You can't have something that's kind of falling over or it will squish on one side. So you're going to be thinking about balance and how it occupies space. It needs to be clothed, please. If you really want to make a nudie, perhaps you can talk tastefully creating that, but I was thinking more clothed figures for this assignment. Um, it needs to be either doing something or holding a prop of some kind. So it's not just a figure just standing, but are they holding something? Are they sitting on something? Or what kind of situation would this figure be in? And then a minimum 8 to 10 inches tall, so about the size, a little bit less of a piece of paper, kind of like your coil pots were. If you go too small, then the details get too small and it becomes more frustrating. I found that this size works well because then you can, it's like if you think 10 inches tall, you know, your waist is about halfway down, I should make the legs about 5 inches. It starts to work out easier for figuring out proportions and things like that. So, somewhere in that range. Step two, what's step two? Explore. Explore, awesome. So for step two, once we finish, I don't know how long this will take me today. We may have some time today. If not... Um, tomorrow I'm going to go through a brief slideshow of possibilities and show you how different things can look after they're um, built. But you do need to have a reference photo. So after you look through the possibilities, I want you to think of what kind of activity you'd like your person to be doing. Are they sitting? Are they standing? How are they standing? What clothes are they wearing? And things like that. So what would interest you? So we'll do a little brainstorming, we'll look at some images, and then you'll have time to find reference photos that interest you. You are also welcome, and it's easy it is to take your phone, take a picture of someone. If you know you're going to be doing a picture of someone that's like sitting on a, I don't know, on a rock, have your friend sit on a rock or a chair and take their picture and take a side view and a front view and a back view so you can see proportions and how things work out. The more pictures you have, the easier it is. So you're welcome to, to create your own. There's things to consider as you're making your person. And I have one here that I played with over the weekend. Just very small. Oh, his hand fell off already. Oh. I cut it in too much. So as they're standing, I mentioned you have to consider balance. Now, I played with it a little bit. So, you know, I was going to do a hat, and then I kind of ran out of time, so I don't have the front of a little baseball cap. But this is just kind of plain kind of standing, but it's balanced. You always have to be thinking about how it sits. Like, if you can't have it, like, on one leg, you know, with your leg in the air, it's not going to balance very well. And clay's pretty heavy, so you also want to be thinking about if they're sitting, how substantial is the piece that they're going to be sitting on so it can support the clay. And one of the things to help make the limbs all fit together is to have them reattach. So if, they're handing, if their hand is on their hip or it's touching something that's also stable, or you know if it's in a pocket, or if it's itching their head, all those are good ways to reattach the limbs. The more that you can reattach, the better. Uh, what else here? And the more you can do out of one piece of clay, the better. So oftentimes, like, I'll make a limb, but then this is actually was all one piece. And I'm going to show you how I kind of carved it and pushed things away so that this whole section becomes one piece. Because think about it. If I had to score and slip this little tiny finger on here, it's going to be pretty fragile, isn't it? It's not a lot of surface to get that little piece together. So if I can sculpt it out of one piece, it's going to work much better. And I know he's got less fingers. Do you get, have you ever noticed with animation, oftentimes animated characters have four fingers? Anybody ever picked up on that? Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Anybody know why? It's just hard to animate. A lot of fingers. And people tend not to notice the four as much, so oftentimes, especially in the past, they would have less fingers because it was quicker to animate. That's one. Um, what else? What else? I think it's a fun fact. 
And then just looking at the structure, how to create a structure underneath the clay is something else we'll talk about. So that you have things like elbows and knees as opposed to a spaghetti looking figure, like the, you know, unless that's what you're looking for. You want to be thinking about joints and proportions and like where the hip would be and where things would line up. So, all right, there's those. Now, what's step three? It's the P and I T E. Plan. Mm. plan. Very good plan. Yes. So, to help you figure out your plan, what you're going to do first, second, third, I'm going to demo. We'll do the explore step tomorrow. And I'll give you time afterwards to do a bit of a sketch. But um, we'll kind of go through step by step what things may work for you. So, to start, to start with the figure kind of like my little messed up friend here. It's not quite done. Um, put him here because I like to refer to. You know. <laughs> He's not so well balanced. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, we're going to start with something you learned when you made your teapot. Ooh, what might that be? Any ideas looking at him? What you made with your teapot that you might use here? Coils. This one. How? What kind of thing? Soft slab. Remember how when you made your teapot, you used soft slabs, and you made, what did you make with the soft slab? What was it? That was the, the press mold, that's correct. The spout, yep, the spout we used, he's not going to do well there. Alright, so we started with the spout, and, come on. I'm going to do a uh, thrown slab, nice and thin, just like we did for the spout of your teapot. Seems to have like a thicker spot right there. So I like to throw it, get it nice and even. Hello. And then after I throw the slab a little bit, I'm going to take a nice clean dowel and just compress it. So that as I, this way, All those little tears that sort of develop from throwing it get compressed, but it stays nice and thin. So each time I do that, I pick, uh, I pick it up and turn it so that it doesn't get too far into the canvas. I'm going to add a little bit of water and work the water. I don't want it to be slimy because that's going to stick to the dowel, but by really working in just a little bit of water, see how it's shiny when I first started? See how it's not really shiny anymore? It's kind of going away. Then I know I've worked in the water a little more, so it's not going to make the clay slimy or sticky, but it's going to make it so it's a little more pliable, a little more plastic. All right. And then I'm going to cut a nice straight bottom. And I like to cut the side in a little bit of an angle, a little bit of a beveled edge, cut the top. And I'm going to leave this side because I'm not sure how big I'm going to make it. Now, I could make pant legs again. This are actually spouts. That's exactly what his pant legs are. They're a little more narrow at the top, a little wider at the bottom, so I can get a little bit more thickness there. And then, I like to work it back and forth a little bit to kind of round it. Nice and tight on one side. And I'm going to go a little wider. I mean, this is a slight bell-bottom look here, depending on You could make... Like a disco person, you could make, you maybe make a hippie. It's fun to think about a personality for your person. You know, is it, is it a boy or a girl? When do they live? Where do they live? The more you know this about your person, the more it's going to be an interesting person, right? I've had, a, when I first started making this, there was a lot of little skaters around. You could have little skater guys. That was often the prop that people used because it added some nice support. And I'm going to cut this at an angle. Throw it up a little bit. And if you remember, I can use the dowel to kind of scooch around and loop the inside. And then I'm going to lay it along the seam and support it there with my finger. And I might loop that just a little bit. Oh, I didn't get a rib. I might get a starting with rib here. Thank you, Mr. Gang. And I just like to go over it gently to get rid of any of those little cracks and things. I don't, I'm not so concerned about surface. I don't like to smooth too early because it's going to get messed up. And now I have 
dog. I just tap it gently. A pant leg. See? Sort of, right? He hasn't quite been anything yet, I know. I'll do the other side. Now, let's see. This is okay. It's, so is this mature clay that's a little bit drier, or is this soft, fresh clay? Roxy, what do you think? Yes, exactly. So when I'm making the clay bend this much, I want really soft, fresh clay. So I'm gonna loop this here. Now let's just say I want to make a princess. What would I be doing slightly different than this? It'd be a dress. Perfect. So I think I heard it. It'd be what? One cylinder. One bigger cylinder. So it's another easy way to get, you know, a different type of figure. One thing to think about, I've had I've had I've had students make princesses before, a girls in fancy dresses. Be thinking about ahead of time the thickness of the dress and how big your arms and things will be. Because your arms will be pretty tiny compared to that. So I just tap it again a little bit, kind of stick them together. If they stick right together, it gives it a nice amount of support right there. And then this, how did I make this one? Yeah. It's just another tube, right? It's another spout, essentially, just like last time. Let's see how big do I want to go. And you can do a couple things. Like this one, I just took it and stuck it over the top. So I'm just repeating it. Another way to think about this is really just modular construction. It's the same module or the same type of building technique repeated over and over. And it doesn't have to lean over like that. You can work with it in different ways, too. So I'll compress it with my dowel. Or just a little bit of water in. If you did want to make it a dress, it'd have to be much taller, right? So you want to be thinking about like the size of the slab as you're starting. I could also take this piece. Oops. I want to make it kind of blend in. So I'm going to start with matching it up. So it's got to fit about here. And actually, I'm doing okay without the dowel. So I can do that and leave it like that. Or, I can make this become part of it. Now it's overlapping a little bit, and I'd like it to be not have one thick spot. So, I am going to slice just a little bit off to get that edge straighter. Round up the bottom. I'll make sure I didn't change it too much. Support this seam because this is floppy clay, and now that it's a bigger tube, it's going to be a little harder to keep in place. I find it really easy to just kind of mess it up when I do that with my finger. So I like the serrated rib to come over and add like little tiny, little tiny fingers because it's easier to press lightly with those, I think, than with my own. All right, so I'm going to loop the inside. Rotating that a little bit, and then I could bring this in and make this become part of like a, a tucked in shirt or something. Oops, it's a little soft right there. should become like a cowboy or something. <laughs> Not sure why. What's my cowboy's name? Ned? Anyone? I personally greatly prefer sculpting older people. They're more fun. Because you can make wrinkles and 
if, they, if they're too like young and pretty, it's not as fun. It's a good idea to check the the thicknesses of your pant legs before you put them together, so you don't have one large one, one small one. <laughs> Something to keep in mind. But here, so here's the nice thing though. Let's just say this is your piece, and you have one much larger pant leg compared to the other one. How long have I spent on this? This hasn't been that long. I made each one pretty quickly. So if you look at it, you don't like how it's turning out or it's not the right size because it's this modular construction, it's all these different parts. I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to make you watch me do it again. Just rip it out and do a new one. It's not long, so it's not a, bad, a big deal to just say, kind of experiment with it. Maybe spend a day and go, you know, I think the pants need to be a little bigger. Or maybe, you know, I'm getting this weird little buckle here. Maybe I'll fix that. Maybe I want to put a knee in there. Kind of push that piece out. And the other thing you can do, I'm building pretty quickly right here. To keep this in place, I could, I won't do it long, I could just come over here, spend a couple minutes. I'll make you stand long, but he was really floppy. I could do that for a couple minutes, and even that helped a little bit, just to give it a little bit of strength now that I know what I want. The next thing I tend to do is to add shoes. Like if you notice his feet here, they actually, I purposely squished the pants a little bit, and I had the feet sticking out, because this provides a wider base. Now notice, he wants to fall back, doesn't he? If I would have just gone slightly forward, <laughs> Just leave his hand over here for the moment. Slightly forward, now he's more steady. So even while they're leather hard like this, you can start to move things around a little bit and push things together. Now that feels so gooey next to that. So, I have this one. And my foot is pretty giant because I want it to be a supportive base. And I like to do little sculptural details before I even put it on there. So I might take this and maybe, I don't know, cowboy boots, huh? They should come to a point. These are some pretty clunky cowboy boots. But maybe I come around and put that edge. I want to make it stable. So this is going to be flat. Maybe I come around and use this edge. Now this is one of my all-time favorite tools for sculpting. A wood sculpting tool. Do you see the connection? And then this. Some people, sometimes they're called modeling tools, sculpting tool. Uh, some people call them wood tool. But you know, then how do you know what to use it for? What's the point, right? And then I can take this, and I'm going to cut. Huh, let me use this side a little arc out of the top, of the front, I mean. And I'm going to have this go toward the back, so it adds. And this is, again, one way to do it. But now I've added a much wider base. So maybe I want to do something like I'm going to play with his stance a little bit, so this leg is out. So he's not just standing straight, and he's a little more stable. By separating the legs a little more, I again make the base a little wider. So I'm still thinking like, okay, is he balanced? Right now, he looks like he's about to fall over. So I gotta make this start to come up here like this. Boy, that one little weak spot there is gonna give me a hard time. And now I can start to say, all right, what do I wanna do next here? Maybe the top of the pants fall right about here. So I can start to use things like this. And I can add little slabs for pockets and things if I want them to stick out. That's always a good, nice option. But if I don't want it to stick out too much, I can use tiny little, uh, let's make this more flat. I can use tiny coils too. So let's just say I wanted to add a pocket. Move this here so you guys can see. So I can add this tiny coil. I'm going to flatten it a little bit so it has an edge. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to bring it here, push this in. 
and loot it in. And again, it's still really soft, so my finger would, I'd mess it up. Because I can't press quite that lightly. And I don't know, he's, he's a cowboy. I feel like he needs a belt. He needs like one of those big giant rodeo belt buckles, right? Anybody ever been to a rodeo? Nobody? I saw the big buckle. Did you? They, that's like they're trophies for rodeos and giant buckles. I went to one in uh, Colorado. When I was in college, sort of like grunge phase, <coughs> I was in like ripped jeans and, you know, baggy clothes. <coughs> you don't wear like ripped jeans and baggy clothes at a rodeo. <laughs> I was, I was just not in my element there. Felt really out of place. But fun. Everybody was like in glittery, fancy things and the grunge look was not, not appropriate really at all. But hey. It's a good experience to be a little comfortable, right? Be out of your comfort zone. All right, so I have this. I kind of have a torso in here, a really weak torso. It's a little tall, but that's okay. I'd rather have it be a little tall than a little too short. So let's see, if I'm looking at this, and I want to think about this. So my, my hips are here. Typically, this is about halfway down my person, right? So if that's about halfway from here to here, halfway from here to here, my shoulders are going to be about here. So I can do a couple things. I can start to fold this over and use this. And I don't have enough there, so I can't fold that over there. But I can start to fold that to get a shoulder. And then I can stick a hole there to make the arm connect. Now here's the thing. If I just stick my arm in, it's got to lead into it, right, to make a definite shoulder. Sometimes, like with this one, I left the top open and I just carved like a U-shape and stuck the hole in there. So I can do things like that. I'm gonna add, because I can feel I'm getting wobbly, another shoe without really spending much time on it, but just so I know he's not gonna fall apart on me. And you can add a base. It's a great way to add support to it. If you'd rather not, then I would think about how you're gonna make the legs or exaggerate the, the feet. So I have that now. What am I going to do with this one there? Hmm. For the arms. And this would be something you could do. I could make this out of thicker coils. If you look at this, this could be made out of coils. It's not too thick, right? If you wanted to define the leg more, do something where you have more detail in that, that's an option for you too. If I want to make a coil out of my arm, or for my arm, this is a giant amount of clay for that. I want to, I'm going to start bigger, because I can always come down. Right now the arm is bigger than my leg, so that's not really helpful. This one, I went a little bit thicker, because I wanted it to look like it was in the clothing. So maybe I'll do, I'm going to give you an idea of a couple different things. So I'm going to go make my coil, and then here's my shoulder. I'm going to push that in. And then I'm going to look at proportion wise. So, all right, so my hand hangs down right below my hips. My hips are here, it's right here, it's kind of like the top of my leg, my hands are there. Which, so that works out well because that's where my pocket would be, right? This is, this is a pretty tall torso right now. I probably need this to come in. So if I want this to come here, and my hand's going to be about here. So halfway up is my elbow. Now to make an elbow, I don't want to curve it because your elbow doesn't curve. I want it to be, I want it to kind of come in. Let's see, I'm going to push it together, kind of get, you know, the point of my elbow, bring that in, so that would sit there, there's my elbow, and then I'm going to cut some off, it just seems really tall, Let's cut some off. a little better. And then I'm going to cut a little U-shape out of here where I'm going to sit. That's where my arm is going to go. And then, let's see. That's, that's a bit long for the arm. Maybe I'll take the extra off. Some extra. Still kind of giant, right? But that's fine because I want a little extra. So I'm going to set this in here. I line it up. What if I have the hand about kind of where that pocket is? So I'm going to start to narrow your arm slowly narrows from your elbow to the wrist, right? And if you're ever wondering, like, if it's looking right, you just, oh, okay, that's narrow. Just, you know, 
Help your neighbor, sure. Nose there, elbow. How much should that stick out? You can help each other out, right? Your people right there. Got your references. So I'm going to thin that, and then, so I want my hand about here. I just squish it. Because, like I said, the more I can do with one piece of clay, the better it's going to be. Now, this is a point where it would be okay to work with drier clay, because this is really wanting to rip on me. So I might go for more mature clay when I get to this point, because hopefully I come back to this the next day, and that's getting to be a little more mature, too. So I have what's going to be like a mitten in a minute, and then I can start to carve it down. So I can take this, and I cut out that side, and then I want to carve fingers, and I want to think of them as separate pieces. So as I'm working with it, I'm going to cut these little pieces. I'm actually going to use a cut knife because it makes nice clean cuts. I'm not going to go too far into the palm if I can avoid it so it's not too thin. I'm going to do my, my four fingers, make my life easier. You're welcome to do four or five, it's up to you. So I've separated them, but now I still have to make them. Does it look like a hand yet? Hmm? Not really. And this is one reason why I don't want to go too tiny, because it still looks kind of messed up, right? And you can exaggerate the hands. I've seen some pretty fun people where the hands are like giant. I remember one where the person was like, you know the scream where they're going like, ah, you, know the, you know what I'm talking about? The famous painting or the movie. What was the movie? With the little blonde kid, Macaulay Culkin, Home Alone, where they kind of mimic the face from the famous painting. And they made the, the hands giant, the student who made it. So it was like, the hands like emphasize that. So you can, you know, it helps sometimes to know proportions and then sometimes to break apart from them. So I make these pieces, and I'm rounding the edges right now, and you can do things like with these. Now here's where I've got to be careful. It's getting really thin, but that comes together, and it's also really easy to let the fingers get, oh, <laughs> dryer clay's a little better for this part. Look at, oh, I'm just going to do three fingers like I said. <laughs> but see, then I've learned, and I throw this one away, and Boy, does that look messed up now? Um, and then I, I make another one, and I'm not upset. Because now I'm making an alien. <laughs> it's a cowboy alien. Uh huh. He's like, oh, I have indigestion because someone just cut off my finger. <laughs> See? Oh. I don't know why that accent, but that's what's going on. Sure. So then I can kind of figure it out, place it. It's reattaching, you know. Maybe I want to put a, a shirt. So for this one, I cut my shirt in a little too deep, obviously, because he lost a whole hand. But what I did here, I just took this with the sharp end, and I worked my way around to press in to get the cuff. Don't go in quite so This one, maybe this is there, but now I want to put, like, he's, this guy's wearing short sleeves. I don't know that cowboys really ever wear short sleeves, so maybe that doesn't work. Maybe he's got a cuff further down. So I'm going to make my tiny coil again. And, there. Wow, that's a messed up looking hand, huh? And I'm going to put this all the way around, so I have a cuff. I'm going to take that off. Ew! Sorry. There we go. Now, maybe I leave the cuff as part of the shirt. It's rolled. Could be a rolled shirt. Maybe I want to make it blend in so that it looks like it's just the edge of clothing. So I would loop that in. And I don't have, I mean, if you think about the idea of wrapping a whole slab around here, that would be really cumbersome. So I just add a little tiny flattened coil, and now it looks like the edge of the sleeve, like so. So I can stick that back in here. Oh, my shoulder. You just said you down. There we go. Sure. <laughs> there we go. So really, he's saying he's going peace. <laughs> there. See, if something goes wrong, if you have a happy accident, just like, you know, Bob Ross would say. Who knows Bob Ross? 
There's no bad losses. It's a strong class, naturally. Yeah. He's a very famous painter. I don't know if he's really very famous, but he had a, he had a cable show. And he said, there's no mistakes, only happy accidents. See? Now he's, he's a peace sign. He's happy. It's good. Right? So, he's got that. Maybe he needs a belt. I could come in. I could carve in little details and things. I could eventually, and I've sometimes if this doesn't quite line up, I could take a little piece of slab that goes across here, and I could loot that in. My fingers again kind of clunky to make this all fit. I want to make sure the shoulder looks more like a shoulder. So this is coming up here like this. What are we doing on top? 15 minutes. Okay. So I got this. Does that look? He's a little more in front. I can really see. There. Peace. Now, for the head, I'm going to do another demo as we get closer to the head, give you a few days on this one. But just to kind of give you an idea, what I started with was basically a thicker ball of clay, and I pull the neck down out of it. And I leave a hole in here so that I can attach this more like this when it's more secure. And i got to hold this because I can already feel it cracking because it's so wet. But when this is a little more leather hard, it can support more weight. I can add something like this to it so that it starts to support that and sit in there. So I might want to work on a collar. I started to do like a suit collar as if I were creating a suit here and I can loot in the different parts. You know, these are little tiny scored and slip buttons. These are carved in. This is a piece of a slab to get the edge of the suit coat. So you can start to add really a lot of little details with tiny coils and tiny slabs. Um, like I said, I can play with the stance a little bit. If you have something where you want more of um, a realistic figure, or you want to start with like you actually see the leg, I would start with the coil and then think about pushing that together and maybe building it in that way. If it's sitting, if your figure is going to be sitting in a space, I would build what they're sitting on, you know, add the legs, get the leg all sculpted the way you want, push the knee out. This should be wider than this. It is actually, believe it or not, from your heel to your knee and your knee to your hip is about the same length. We usually think of your calf as being shorter because it's in there, but when you include their foot on there, it's really about the same. So you could take that coil and put that in there, start to add different things. And again, the more you can do with one piece of clay, the better. So if I have, even if I have pant legs on here, oops, flatten that a little more. I would probably make the whole piece and bring the pant leg up. So I can play with the structure. But one way that helps, and we talked about this when we made the chia heads, about thinking what's underneath the clay. Remember how I made you like feel your faces, even though you had clay on your hands, and figure out where it sticks out and where it goes in around your eyes. The same thing is going to help your figure look better. As we think about like, all right, my knee sticks out here, it's narrow here on my ankle. But, like, think of the structure that's underneath the clothing or underneath the clay, because that's going to help you get the different parts to fit together and to work out. So there's a random leg sitting on a stump, in case you want to do that. But just to get an idea of how you can start to build up and add the rest of the parts of it. And then if something like this, I don't recommend making the whole body and like slicing it, but like, and then maybe you have a thicker coil here, or you have something else here. Um, let's see, 10 minutes. I think I can show you the slides in 10 minutes. So. Does this give you an idea of how to start? Yeah. Yes? All right. We'll come back to the head in a few days. In the meantime, just sit on these first couple tables so you can see the screen. And I'm going to show you some samples.